my name is Gordon Heinrich. Uh, it's spelled H-E-I-N-R-I-C-H. Okay. And um, you know your company? Or, you know. Uh, I actually uh, don't call myself a company. I do business under my name. Uh, yeah. Gordon okay. Heinrich Farming, I guess yeah, you can. Yeah, that's what we're getting at. Perfect. Okay. okay. So I'm going to actually reiterate that question for, sure. for the interview just by okay. telling me your name and a little bit about, about what you do and your, and your okay. farming operation. Ready to go? Go. Okay. Okay, tell me your name and, and, and what you do. My name is Gordon Heinrich, and uh, I'm a fifth generation farmer here in the Modesto uh, area. Uh, uh, our uh, farming operation is a family farming operation, and uh, it's under Gordon Heinrich Farming. And what, what crops do you grow, and how many acres do you have? And I farm approximately uh, 650 acres. About 40% is in almonds, 40% in walnuts, and about 20% in uh, open field crops, uh, corn, alfalfa, beans, and some hay and forage. Uh, all of it is uh, in the West Modesto area, and uh, I've been doing this for about 38 years. So tell me, um as a multi-generational farmer, the importance of family farming to you and sustaining the land and resources for future generations. Pause for one second. No, oh, it's really good question. So this truck path. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, tell me, talk a little bit more about uh, the multi-generational aspect of your farming operation and um, the importance of family farming and sustaining the land for future generations. Well, my... Uh, Great-great-grandfather moved here to uh, West Modesto uh, in 1904. And uh, he moved here from Lima, Ohio. Uh, they moved here as farmers and they started dairies and uh, was farming grain crops and uh, uh, hay crops. Uh, then more recently, my father uh, also had a dairy. I was raised on a dairy. And uh, uh, in 1963, because of low milk prices, he sold the dairy and uh, planted almonds and so we become almond farmers. Uh, ever since my great-great-grandfather moved here in 1904, each generation of the Heinrichs has uh, continued to farm in some form. And uh, I think it's real important for us to be good stewards of the land and to uh, leave the resources uh, vital for future generations. No, it was a good oh, okay. sound bite. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Okay, so let's, um, what does it mean to you just in general? Just in general, what does it mean to you to farm sustainably? When you think of that, what does that mean? Well, I, uh, I think to farm sustainably means that uh, we need to be able to produce a safe food product in a safe environment, economically and profitably. And also, we want to be able to leave uh, the resources uh, vital for the next generations to come. Can, and we can, try, can we try that question just one more time? The dog was kind of whining a little bit. Okay. Sorry. Really good. <laughs> it's going to be in a different way now. That's okay. That's okay. We're going to get the dog out of there. We're going to get another op option, you know, <laughs> to choose from. So, yeah. yeah, right. I mean, and they can, no wrong answer. Because that'll work, but if we can get a better one. Yeah. Okay, so. Do you mind just kind of no, no, taking another shot at that? What sure. it means to farm sustainably? I'm on dog patrol. <laughs> I believe what it means to farm uh, sustainably is to produce a food product that is safe, uh, environmentally safe, uh, and economically and profitably, and to leave the uh, resources uh, vital for the future generations. Can we move a little bit into technology and practices that you use when you're talking about your irrigation, um, the amount and timing of your irrigation and, and technology that you incorporate into making some of those irrigation decisions? On our irrigation uh, practices, uh, we have uh, about half of our acreage is under pressurized systems. And uh, before about 30 years ago, 90% of this area was uh, all under flood irrigation. Now, there's new technology that's come uh, to pass and uh, we are utilizing some of that new technology. Uh, there's a lot of advantages to uh, pressurized systems. Uh, you have more control, uh, you can meter the water uh, 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 for, each, uh, for each irrigation 
and uh, you can do uh, your intervals uh, as close as what you need to. Can so, pick that up yeah. really quick, uh, just the advantages, what are the advantages of the, the advantages of a, of a pressurized system, which uh, would include uh, uh, solid set sprinklers, uh, micro sprinklers, uh, uh, drip irrigation, is uh, it conserves water for one. Uh, second of all, it gives you the ability to meter any amount of water at any time uh, that the crop needs it. And what about the, the decisions that you make? I mean, do you use technology? Do you look at evapotranspiration rates and soil and plant moisture and things like that to try to get you know, the most efficiency out of your... Let's talk a little bit about okay. the efficiency and how you make those decisions. Uh, our decisions uh, to, uh, that's made for uh, uh, let's start water... Over. Okay. So talk a little bit about the decision making in your irrigation. Our decision makings for our irrigation uh, we have several tools in our, our, our bag. Uh, one of them, uh, we use what they call a pressure bomb, and it measures the uh, stress on the tree. And we go, we have a, a, a route. Every three days, we uh, monitor each orchard, and uh, that tells us uh, the stresses that's put on the trees and uh, when we need to irrigate. Uh, it's very important. Water management is probably the most important uh, aspect of farming. Uh, everything else falls in after water management. Just get that last sound bite. Like, what's the most important part of you were saying? The most important part of um, the, the most important part of uh, farming is water management. And uh, if you've got the water management down, everything else will fall in behind that. Beautiful. And and uh, moving into nitrogen fertilizers, similar question in terms of how you what you base your applications on. Um, sampling, developing a nitrogen budget, just kind of want to go over any of the tools that you use in getting okay. the most <clears throat> from your nitrogen fertilization. Our nitrogen program has uh, many aspects to it. Uh, my brother uh, works as a crop consultant and so uh, he's part of my team. I consider him one of my team and uh, I work very closely with him. Uh, our nitrogen uh, usage uh, if we're going to try to get it down to uh, 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 understandable way is we use approximately one-tenth of a pound of nitrogen for each pound of almonds produced. So in, uh, in reality, if you produce a 2,000 pound crop, you'll use approximately 200 pounds of nitrogen. And do you, do you adjust that? throughout the season in terms of making a yield assessment and then adjust what you expected to apply to your nitrogen going in and, and has that changed over the years in terms of the information that you have and how you use that to make your decisions? Our nitrogen uh, applications have changed uh, drastically over the years. Uh, years ago uh, people uh, didn't really use the scientific approach that we use today and uh, uh, we uh, put on approximately four or five applications a year. The first application is uh, about uh, 30 percent, the next one's 30 percent, 20 percent, 20 percent, and 10 percent. Uh, we, uh, what we would call spoon feeding uh, the crop. Uh, years ago uh, they didn't used to do that. Uh, they would put on uh, heavier applications, but with the price of nitrogen, uh, we want to be uh, in the groove of just exactly what that crop needs. So can we, that's excellent, can we, in addition to the price, can we talk about some of the other factors that might be wanting you to really be able to dial that in in terms of maybe, you know, water quality or environmental impacts or um, yield, all those things, can you kind of bring all that together and and talk about the importance of getting that nitrogen just right. Okay. I know I'm throwing you a curveball. That's okay. No, no, I, I, I think we can do that. <laughs> um, there's a lot of uh, science involved uh, and a lot of research that has been done uh, over the years as to uh, the amount of nitrogen that a tree uh, needs, uh, the timing. We have a lot of tools uh, available to us. We do uh, regular uh, tissue tests and soil tests in our orchards and uh, that gives us a base for uh, 
what we need to apply and when we need to apply it. Um, Do you have, um, oh wait, I'm sorry, I'll go in order. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Are there, do you have potential water quality issues in this area and how do you manage your pesticides or your, or your nitrogen to mitigate any potential like off-site movement and things that you apply? In the areas that I farm, I'm not aware of any water quality uh, issues. Uh, we do take a, a lot of precautions and precautions in our operation uh, when we use uh, pesticides. Uh, First of all, we use drift agents to try to keep it on our targeted crops. Uh, second of all, we uh, wait for the right weather conditions uh, to apply our pesticides. And that's very important. And as a result of that, we do a lot of our spraying uh, at night. Um, and you kind of touched on that, but in terms of integrated pest management, do you want to talk a little bit about the tactics you use in terms of monitoring or sampling and how that's evolved over the years. Okay. You need me to ask you a question? No, I didn't know if he was adjusting oh, you're, the you're camera. Good, okay. Yeah. Um, go ahead and ask it again. Sure. In terms of pest management, can we talk a little bit about integrated pest management and uh, sampling, monitoring, things that you do to make those pest management decisions and how that's evolved over the years? Our, uh, our pest management program uh, has evolved over the years and right now what we try to do uh, when we have a, a problem, a disease or a pest that's given us a problem in the orchards, uh, we monitor it, uh, we assess uh, whether it's at a threshold that requires uh, a spray and then when we do spray we have a tendency to use uh, softer materials. Uh, we like to use the softer materials uh, for two reasons. One is worker safety, and the second is for our beneficials in the orchard. We have found that if we keep our threshold and the level of beneficials in the orchard up, uh, that helps in uh, controlling the pests that we're after. Really good at this. We're going to move into talking about. The I've been at it for 38 years. <laughs> <laughs> How about the California Almond Sustainability Program? You okay? You want yeah, to no, I'm fine. This lean on this tree is uh, <laughs> getting tiring. But it looks so good. Okay. <laughs> it really does. Um, okay, so talking about the Almond Sustainability Program, tell me a little bit about when you first started participating and, and what you've done in terms of that participation so far. Uh, I, my first participation in the uh, Almond uh, Sustainability Program has been uh, about a year and a half ago. I went to a workshop and filled out some modules. I can't recall how many, uh, but it was a learning experience. Uh, I've been able to uh, monitor it and look online and do some comparison with uh, other growers. Uh, I think it's real important that uh, we as an almond industry tell our story from our perspective. And uh, there's no one else better to tell our story than us because we're out in the field every day. Oh, you're, you're just jumping ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, you've done the online modules as well. You filled all. The I haven't online. really. I've I've, mo I've won online, and, uh, <laughs> but I haven't been back <laughs> since. We're not quite there. <laughs> I had a Sorry, great I teacher. I had a great teacher <laughs> to show me the ins and outs of it, but I I've, I've just been busy. Just and farming, I, I, sure. I I'm not sure I can answer it, more questions on that module thing. Okay, no problem. That was an excellent answer. I'm not uh, really up. What about uh, in terms of, um, well, things that you might have learned from participating, comparing yourself to other growers, did it make you think differently about any aspect of how you farm or think about things you might want to try? Or uh, When I was uh, online and comparing uh, some of my program to other individuals, it really confirmed what I'm doing because I'm finding a common thread that everybody is pretty much on the same page. Uh, and I think that's a result of the research and technology available to us today and the science that uh, we've learned over the years. You kind of answered why you think individual growers should participate just to tell their own story. Would you have yeah. anything else you'd want to? I don't think so. Can you mind? That's fine. Um, and can we just talk a little bit about the Almond Board in terms of um, what you perceive that it does for you as a grower sure. and how you feel about how the assessment dollars are spent? 
Uh, I believe the Ammon Board is a very important uh, part of our industry. And uh, the, the Ammon Board uh, spends a lot of money on research, I think is invaluable. Uh, we need to continue all the research that the Ammons are doing, uh, the product promotion, uh, help with uh, marketing our products is all invaluable and uh, I highly support the Ammon Board and everything that they do. Did you prep him on that? That was really good. <laughs> I sure appreciate it. <laughs> um, and then just can we talk, I don't think I gave you this question, I just want to ask you about the tour and the value of having these people um, in, in, in the orchard and seeing firsthand how, how almonds are grown. Do you mind just giving us? No. Okay. Uh, I'm really uh, happy to be a part of this uh, Almond Board Sustainability Tour and uh, I think it's a very valuable and a well spent time that we can uh, tell our story actually in the field uh, with our uh, orchards in the background. Uh, we're going to be explaining some of our, uh, our methods, uh, some of our program, and uh, able to field some questions and hopefully everybody will gain something from it.